Hey guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our automation testing with Puppeteer course. And in this section, we are going to be talking about Puppeteer Extended. And in this video, we are going to be talking about cross browser testing with Puppeteer Firefox. So we have not discussed about Puppeteer Firefox browser support ever in this particular series, at least from the starting of this series. But in this video, we are going to be talking about the power of Puppeteer Firefox and leveraging the power of Firefox with Puppeteer, which is pretty awesome. So the installation of Puppeteer Firefox is pretty easy as well. All you have to do is this. NPM I Puppeteer Firefox will make the installation. And again, with Visual Studio Code, it's even more simpler that we'll be discussing in this particular video. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my Visual Studio Code IDE from the same project that we have been working all these days in our earlier two sections. All right, so this is our project that we have been working so long in our course. And we are in our section three. And we also discussed about Applify Puppeteer Extender and how we can make use of Applify to perform an action. But in this video, we're going to turn our attention a little bit with our section one code just to grab some of the uh, code from here so that we can make use of it. So I'm just going to copy this particular code and then I'm just going to uh, add a new file over here. And then I'm going to call this as uh, Firefox dot js just for now and over here i'm just going to paste this particular code that we have already written right so as you can see this code actually works with the chrome browser we already know that we already executed this many time and this code was working fine without any problem so if i just open the control shift p and you can see that this time i'm actually showing you a demo on my windows machine rather the mac operating system and you can see that it's also very, very seamless. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here to the section three uh, and I'm just going to do an LS so you can see there is section three. Oops. Section three over here. Uh, let me do it clear. And then over here, I'm just going to do a node of Firefox.js. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to save this. So once I run this particular piece of code, you can see that it actually were, uh, opens up a browser and then it types the value over here in the Chrome browser, which is pretty awesome. So this was working fine even before and it's working fine right now. But today, instead of working with the Chrome browser, which we have been working all these days, I'm going to show you a demo on the Firefox browser. So all I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to uh, type what is called as a puppeteer and once I hit control space you can see that it is currently loading uh, and then in here I'm just gonna type puppeteer Firefox and maybe because I have not put a comma over there oops and once I hit a double quotes here uh, you can see that brings up the version so the currently the latest version of this particular package is gonna be the 0.5.0 so this is the latest version of Puppeteer Firefox, which is way behind the actual Puppeteer itself. But you can see that it still makes sense to use this because not all the uh, supporting uh, libraries of Firefox is currently working as like Chrome. So if you just go to your browser uh, and if you search for Puppeteer Firefox and you can see that there is this uh, Puppeteer Firefox uh, github repo and also there is this uh, firefox puppeteer read the doc.io so these things will actually tell you uh, how this is actually working uh, and also if you go this guy you know the firefox puppeteer and you can see there is something called as api status where it shows you is puppeteer firefox ready so once you click that it will show you that it has like 82 percentage of test passing supported api is 89 percentage and it was last updated 29 days ago just kind of crazy and you can see that most of the apis are supported and some of the apis that you can see here which is highlighted in red color are currently not supported so these are some of the apis that you may not find working uh, in the firefox browser as opposed to the chrome browser but still you can see that most of these important stuffs are actually working so if you want to give a shot with the firefox browser don't hesitate to do that you can actually work with 
the Puppeteer Firefox as well. And now it's time for us to write the actual code. So with the latest version of the Chrome uh, dev tool, you can now do uh, a very, very easy cross-browser testing uh, of the Firefox code as well. So as mentioned by the Google team itself, we're gonna be doing exact same kind of code over here. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, the code is actually written over here, something like this, which is fine. But just that I'm gonna wrap this within one more layer. So I'm just gonna call this as a const of test and I'm gonna call this as a sync of browser. So I'm just gonna say this one as the browser. I'm gonna open this guy and maybe I can just put it over here. And then this browser that you can see in here, I'm just gonna turn this into, maybe I'm just gonna cut this particular piece of code because we don't really have to hard code the browsers at least. And I'm gonna put this over here. So basically uh, this is gonna be uh, uh, the Chrome browser and then we're gonna include the Firefox browser. Uh, so, but as of now, don't worry about it. We are going to be changing this particular piece of code. So what I'm going to do is just for the sake of our demonstration to make things more clear, because you can see this is just Puppeteer makes things a little complex. So I'm going to call this as uh, Puppeteer Chrome, uh, which is going to be the usual library that we use to import. And then I'm going to call the Puppeteer Firefox, right? And this one, I'm going to call this as Puppeteer Firefox. So now we have two browsers in here. So this is going to be Puppeteer Chrome. Uh, this is for the Chrome browser. And then I'm going to include the Puppeteer Firefox. So that's going to be this browser. And I'm going to call this as Firefox here. Right? So these are the two browsers that we'll, we'll be working with uh, for the Chrome and Firefox. And now we have to run the test on these two browsers. That's why we have this particular test over here. Let me format the documentation. All right. Uh, and now we can just see this. So let's change this to page uh, instead of page two. All right. The code looks even more cleaner right now. Uh, and then I'm just gonna run this whole test and see how it actually works. So you can see that I have not made any change. I have just removed the browser from inside over here. And then I have created uh, this particular test constant. And then I'm gonna be using this particular test as a method to pass the browser as a parameter to perform an action for us, right? So now all I'm gonna do is this. I'm just coming over here and then I'm just gonna type an await of test and over here I need to pass the browser parameter that I have passed in. So the browser is nothing but the Chrome browser in our case. So this is the Chrome browser and then I'm gonna write one more test here for the Firefox browser. So you can see that we are now passing the Chrome browser and then we're running the test on the Firefox browser as well. So you can see this is now kind of cross browser testing that we are running the same test on two different browsers same time. And now if I try to execute this particular piece of code, oops, and it says cannot find the uh, module Puppeteer Firefox, which is crazy. Uh, we already have Puppeteer Firefox, so maybe I'm just gonna save it. And oops, maybe I need to do an npm install because I did not did that. So let me do that. So you can see that now it is installing the Puppeteer Firefox for us. So basically the Puppeteer Firefox will download uh, a, a version of Firefox within our own local machine. As you can see here, it is downloading a 60 MB of Puppeteer Firefox within our own project. So once this is downloaded, you can uh, then try running uh, this particular piece of code. There you go. And now if I try to oops, run this particular Puppeteer Firefox, uh, you can see that now it launches a test for me on the Chrome browser as usual, uh, which is pretty normal. And now it should open a Firefox browser as well. As you can see here, it opens a Firefox browser this time and it types 
the exact same value for us in the Firefox browser as well, which is pretty cool. So this is what is the power of the Puppeteer Firefox along with Puppeteer Chrome that is by default available for us. So now you can see that we can run the same test on two different browser using Puppeteer in a cross browser fashion, which is pretty cool. So this was not the option which was available before. And now we can see that we can extend the Puppeteer library to support not just Chrome browser, but also the Firefox browser. In upcoming days, we know that Microsoft is also working with the Chromium project, which means Microsoft Edge Chrome browser will also be supported with Puppeteer because it's already using Chrome by default. So now you can see that there will be three browser support. So Microsoft Edge Chrome browser, Google Chrome browser, and Firefox browser. So the only left behind will be Safari and Opera maybe. Maybe they will join the stream in a different fashion or maybe Puppeteer will support them, which makes Puppeteer tool even more stronger in the market and a lot of people will start using Puppeteer as a tool for their cross-browser testing, which is something not many different tools are actually supporting right now. So very popular as well, but you can see that this tool is really doing good in this particular cross-browser testing department. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day and meet you in our next section.